started wearing hearing aids. Um, I now have a cochlear implant. I was the director of membership and chapter development. They have over 200 chapters throughout the United States. Uh, it didn't work out for me to have a chapter in Laguna Woods, so I've got the Hearing Well Club. I am the chapter advisor for two hearing loss support groups that belong to HLAA Hearing Loss Association. One is in the city of Orange, and the other is in Mission Viejo. So I'm always busy working with people with hearing loss. So, um, and the purpose, oh, let's, let's get assistive listening devices. In addition to captioning, we have assistive listening devices. So, okay, Hope's got one. Who would like to try, so we have two people. If you raise your hand and keep your hand up, we'll bring one to you. In a room this size, in a room this size, um, and the microphone, the sound has a tendency to bounce all over the room. It kind of creates a reverberation. If you have hearing aids, you may be overhearing. And so I'm gonna change something while I'm talking. So using an assistive listening device is a good idea. And so we have them here. We also have, okay. I'm gonna run through this really quick. I go through this before every meeting. And for those of you who are regulars here, you, you're probably all using the hearing loop and you're sick and tired of hearing me talk about it. So I'm gonna to try to be quick. How many new people do we have in the room? Okay, good. I want you to know about hearing loops. Hearing loops. There is a hearing loop in this room. You don't see it. It's, it's a copper wire that's running around the baseboards here. And it is connecting to hearing aids that have a telecoil. A telecoil. So let me just get more. So there's a picture of a room, and you can see that the copper wire could either be in the ceiling or it could be on the floor. It's connected to the sound system. By the way, Brian, you could start that camera. <laughs> We are videotaping um, this session. We've started videotaping all of our meetings. Um, so, and I upload them to YouTube. And so that if you miss a meeting, you have a chance to catch up. And if you weren't here for the, uh, the Consumer's Guide to Purchasing a Hearing Aid, that was January's meeting. I recommend that you watch that uh, video. If you are in the market for hearing aids uh, now or any time in the in the future, um, just go to the Hearing Well Club online, hearingwellclub.com, and click on the videos link, and you can scroll down and find the one you want to watch. Okay, <clears throat> back to the hearing loop. This is a telecoil that's sitting on a dime. And this telecoil is inside the hearing aid. 80% or better of the hearing aids that are available now have this in them. But you may not be aware that you have it. So there's a hearing aid and that's what kind of looks like inside. That was one picture I was able to find. What, I, what you need to do is you need to ask your hearing aid provider if you have one. And if you do, ask them to activate it and, and set it up as a program. Most of you who have hearing aids are aware 
that you have programs. You've got program one, you've got program two for the restaurants, or to, supposedly to reduce background noise, that type of thing. So program three or four would be your hearing loop or telecoil program. So it's easy to add, easy peasy, if you have a telecoil. So you want to get this little brochure that's in the back. See it up here? And because it has on there, do I have a telecoil? So it explains a little bit about hearing loops. It explains about telecoils. And it even has a message right here for your uh, hearing aid provider. So take, the, make an appointment, uh, call them, make an appointment, go in and have it uh, activated. So why in the heck would you want to do that? <laughs> that's, that's the question. Uh, I also have another flyer that's in the back. It's called, What is a Hearing Loop? And the other one is, uh, T-coil equipped, uh, T-coils expand the functionality of your hearing aid. So be sure and pick, pick up one of these and this flyer to help educate yourself on hearing loops and telecoils. So the people that are listening in on the devices now are hearing me with no background noise. People who have telecoils and have switched to that program, they are hearing me direct. I, my voice is in their ear. So who's on telecoil now? There you go. There you go. Thank you. Yep. And the, most of you, I believe, you learned about that from me. So, um, yay. <laughs> Laguna Woods Village. The loops are in Laguna Woods Village. There is a loop in this room, as I explained. There's also one in Clubhouse 2, the main ballroom. That's a big room. That's a huge room. And when somebody's on the microphone, I would not be able to hear them at all if I couldn't turn on my telecoil. I hear them very clearly. Um, the boardroom is looped. What else? Uh, Clubhouse 7. The main room, not the bridge room, but the other room, is now loop. So if you attend meetings in there, um, I, I'm also the me a member, um, I'm the ch membership chair for the PC club, and they have their meetings there. And I was so disappointed so many times to go and not be able to really understand everything that was being said. So, um, and there's uh, the towers in their activity room. That is looped, and more is coming. They're planning a renovation for Clubhouse 3, and I really look forward to having loops in all the meeting rooms and the theater. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So now, so now I have to tell you a story. Did anybody see Blythe Spirit this weekend? The old pros. Um, had a play called Blythe Spirit, it's a Noel Coward play, and it was right here in, in the theater. I had tickets for uh, s Saturday night. I arrived Saturday night, I checked out a, a listening device, they don't have a loop there, but they, I checked out a listening device, and um, I sat down, and it didn't work. 40 minutes I sat there and I said, you know what? I am so frustrated. I'm trying, I'm getting like every other word. I'm not getting this. Uh, I'm going home. So I went home. The next day, um, I had a table for the Hearing Well Club at the Village Games opening. And there were three cast members and a production member from Blythe Spirit production. So I told them about my experience, and they were going, oh, wow, well, well, we'll be happy to give you a ticket if you can come back tomorrow for the matinee and see if we can't get this fixed. So I contacted the staff here, and um, at the very last minute, it was discovered, and I've, I've gotten more story after that, um, that the system had been turned off. It was just a matter of a flip of a switch. That's all it was. But I'll tell you, I was so frustrated and so, 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 so upset. But anyway, since then, um, I've written to the um, 
the president of the old pros I've written to, uh, who forwarded it to the supervisor here in Clubhouse 3 or the P Performing Arts Center. And I got a very nice um, email back from the supervisor explaining that there was a power outage here and when they turned all the systems on, they all went on except for the infrared system, which is the system needed for the sound for the devices. So this is why I scream and holler all the time. We need to create awareness about hearing loss. I told the president of Old Pros in my email, I said, it, I feel that it is their responsibility as well to make sure that people that buy tickets for their program have full enjoyment, including assistive technology. And of course they said, well, that's GRF that's in charge of all the devices. I know that. But you know, they have rehearsals and they should be having those systems checked. But nobody is thinking about us. But we need to speak up. My concern is on that Saturday night, there were two people I helped with devices and, and I think that they missed out on hearing too. They are probably of the mind to say, oh, I'm just not technical, it's my fault. Um, I'm just not going to do this again. And they didn't complain. And they will probably never buy tickets again. What a shame. But it's all because people with hearing loss, for the most part, don't talk about their hearing loss. Shh, shh. There's a stigma. And I want to say, the more you come to these meetings, the more you learn about hearing loss, that you will be feel less of a stigma, talk to your family and your friends, and make hearing loss a concern in your life. Make, make hearing loss, make, <laughs> create awareness about hearing loss. Because I'm, I've gone to the recreation manager and I said, you know, every single program you do, you needed a checklist. What have we done for people with hearing loss? 75 percent, 50 percent or better of residents in Laguna Woods Village at age 75 have some level of hearing loss. That's statistics from uh, a combination of, of the Social Services Department and the National Institutes for Health. That's where I'm getting my numbers. So we need, we need to you know, rattle our, our cages a little bit. Uh, and we don't have to be nasty, we just have to say, you know, what happened? Let's fix this. Or um, I would like to have a um, hearing loop put in dining room one. There's a lot of people that would like to have a hearing loop in dining room one. Um, what about the other clubhouses? Um, this is a um, flyer that I have in the back. And it, it tells you what else is available in the other clubhouses. So Clubhouse 5 has assistive listening devices. You have to check it out from the supervisor or the staff. Uh, clubhouse 6 has devices. So every clubhouse pretty much has devices. And also the PC um, lab, not the, the, the learning center, the PC learning center, when they have classes, that room is now looped. So if you've ever said, and I've had a few people tell me, but so if you've ever said to yourself, I can't be in a classroom because I can't hear the instructor, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> Not if you have hearing aids, telecoil, and you just go in, turn on your telecoil, you don't have to borrow anything, you don't have to wear anything, it's just a done deal. Very, very uh, low maintenance. Okay. This is a flyer that's available back there. So what we're doing is, is we want to get churches looped. So we have, a gentle, we have a couple of gentlemen in this room that want St. George's to be um, looped. So we're, they're working on that. And uh, Geneva Presbyterian is looped. Uh, church of the Cross, Lutheran Church on El Toro Road is looped. So if you've stopped going to church because you can't hear, and the Lord wants you to hear, how are you going to know the word of the Lord if you can't hear it? So those churches have 
are providing hearing loops for you. And we want to put them in the synagogues. We want to put them in all the churches. So please talk to your, um, your church. I will come with you if you would like, and I will help introduce. I have special brochures just for churches and synagogues um, to introduce them to providing hearing loops. So, okay. I don't want you to be as frustrated as I was in, in a room with a device that didn't work. Anyway, we don't want that to happen anymore. All right. I am your presenter today. Yay. That's okay. That's okay. Hold your applause for Danny, please. <laughs> Okay, um, but before I do that, I want to introduce uh, a couple of people to you. One, we'll do a, a little five-minute type presentation, and um, the other one will just stand up. Um, so I want to, uh, Josh. I want you. Well, well, you guys both come up here. Uh, this is Josh. Isn't he tall? He's 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 tall like Ann Mundell Noel is tall, and. And this is Ann Mundell's son. Ah. ah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, and he's the founder of an, a company called Neighboring. Neighboring. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rich is going to just tell you a few little things about Neighboring. I've already used their services. I'm really happy. Um, and I, I just, I don't normally do this, but I, I hope you'll allow this little five-minute presentation. So here you go. Thanks, Tony. There you go, Rich. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for having me today. Um, so yeah, like Tony was saying, we're neighboring. Um, you know, Josh kind of got this idea a while back when he was working uh, as a valet at the Marriott in Irvine, right? And uh, he was kind of, I guess, running in the rain and had this idea of how can I better serve people day-to-day uh, -day activities versus just running through the rain collecting cars. So that's where Neighboring was born. Um, so Neighboring, we provide services, uh, connections really, between homeowners and local college students. So Laguna Woods residents with students in Lake Forest, Mission Viejo, uh, Laguna Hills, all around you um, to help you complete chores and tasks around your homes that you don't have the time or the energy to do yourself. So these tasks could be, could be anything that you could imagine. Um, am I in the way? No, I'm good. Um, we do any non-professional chores. Um, so it could be things like helping around the house, cleaning, painting, uh, cleaning out your garage, um, organizing IT help. Josh was just telling me some stories about how a few of you had said you hire these expensive services for a couple quick tasks. And uh, it's incredible. You, you spend an hour with a student who knows this stuff like the back of their hand. And they could sometimes teach you better than a 10-minute class could. So we always encourage people to reach out to students, um, network with the students. So why neighboring? Why college students? Why hire these local kids? Um, we have a big heart for local communities, uh, for kind of back in the day you go and ask Johnny down the road to come help you mow your lawn for a couple bucks. That's kind of the same idea. Um, so hiring these local college students uh, benefits you because it's a lower cost to you. Um, you know, these are part-time uh, part working students so a couple extra bucks to go see a movie or go out with friends goes a long way for them. Um, you can also trust these kids because they're all background checked and they're interviewed by us. So they kind of go through a process. We don't try to send crazy people to your house. That's not good. Um, and it's also great because it works off your and their availability. You say to us, I need someone here on Tuesday from 2 to 4 p.m. We send an alert to the kids saying, hey, who's available from two to four to help clean a garage? Kids respond, we send somebody your way, the chore gets done, 
everybody wins. So how does this process work? Um, so all you have to do, you can go ahead and call us in, you can even go online, or you can email us, uh, but primarily, we've got that phone service for you guys. Uh, Josh or myself would be answering the phone, so it's really personal. Um, we ask you what kind of chore needs to get done, uh, how long the chore is, and then we find the student, we tell you who's coming, we tell them where they're going, and the chore gets done. So like I said, our big focus is face-to-face -face interactions, personal interactions, neighborly interactions. Um, we are available, you know, phone, website, you can tweet us, Facebook us, fax us, email us, however you want to do it, but we're available for you guys and for servicing our local communities. Um, you know, these kids, they're driven, um, they're smart. I'm always a big advocate of them networking with you guys because you've been through a lot of the places that they're going. So they have a lot to learn from you guys. So I think this is a great program. I'm excited. I've been here just for a few weeks with Josh, and I'm learning a lot, and it's great. Um, so check us out. I'll leave our number up here. Uh, that's my email as well. And yeah, thank you for your guys' time. Thank you, Tony. Any questions? Yeah, do you have, did you have cards? We do, we have brochures in the back, yes. Cards and brochures in the back, so after the meeting, stop by and pick them up. What do you charge? Yeah. What do you charge? What do you charge? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got uh, preset kind of prices for the hour, but it's $20 for the first hour, and then kind of based on how much longer you need and how many students, it's just, preset for you, which we can go over. It's got prices for that all for you as well, but $20 an hour. Any so other questions? A job that I had done, I had needed to have a wall painted, and they came in, and they were done so quickly, and it was so well done. So I had more of an hour left, so I said, okay, can you take those shelves down for me? Yeah. <laughs> so I got another task done, all in the same hour, so uh, they're willing to do that. Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, Rich. They want to know if you do windows. Do you do windows? Cleaning? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Boy, that's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to do windows. Okay.